and you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you be not troubled, for these things are the beginning of sorrows. We're all going to have to toughen up. America has been in a precipitous judgment and decline ever since the um, COVID breakout that came from China with American engagement from our bioweapons research that was strategic in thwarting the 2020 election. We had four years of peace. Abraham Accords, an embassy moved to Jerusalem. Iran backed down. We had, we had our, our um, 53 Jeff fighters that they could count ready to go avenge ourselves when Trump was there for the 53 hostages. Iran blinked. They said, no, we don't want to mess with this guy. China wouldn't mess with him. And after, after Trump took out Soleimani, Iran never forgave that. That blow to their pride, their number one general, their Alexander the Great, leading the terrorists that mutilated and dismembered thousands of Americans with special bombs and IED weapons. What, uh, what I want to focus on now is, is this World War III in the beginning? You know, we always, I always was interested in end time prophets talking about Gog and Magog and Rosh and Russia. Well, Russia seems to be getting its nose in this saying, hey, we want to see the boundaries of Israel restored back to its 1967 uh, status. We want to be the defenders of the Arab-Palestinian uprising. We want to be at the table negotiating for you. Forget the United States. The United States, under the leadership of Biden, is in a, the reverse of being under Trump. Under Trump, we had no wars. The world wouldn't pick a fight with us. Uh, now we've got somebody that looks weak. Afghanistan was the opening act. You saw that absolute travesty. Then you've got our, our battle for trans rights in the military. Well, we just look weak. And so the other, the other countries in the world are looking at us and saying, we don't think America is what it was. And now they're taking out their number one general, Trump. They're trying to lock him up. This is the propitious time. On top of that, what does Biden do? He gives $6 billion, $6 billion to the Prince of Persia. Uh, that it, it's, and where did that money go? It went to Hamas. It went to the uh, ability of them to attack Israel. And so make no mistake about it. This isn't a terror attack. This is a military operation. I, I fully expect that Hezbollah in the north is going to be coming out with a raining down rockets, so they haven't already. And how did Israel get caught sleeping? With the billions of dollars of support that we give them and the advanced technology that they have, we rely on them for intelligence in the Middle East. And, and here it is. Get this. It's like a 9-11 attack. We should always be looking at what happens on 9-11 because the, these demons want to take those dates and memorialize them as, as, as fixtures. So this is October 6th. is the 50th anniversary of the Yom Kippur War in 1973. They wanted to fight on the holy day. They wanted to fight on a Sabbath. Uh, the Arabs did, the, the, the Arab alliances. And so they attacked Israel on, that, on Yom Kippur. And so here we have the same celebratory date, 50 years later, the same demons are loose, except now we have a more dangerous alliance. We've got Russia, Persia, which is Iran. Call it what it is. It's the Prince of Persia. It's Rosh, and it's the dragon. You've got the dragon, China, which is like, I'm probably right out of the book of Revelations, chapter 12. You've got the dragon. You've got uh, the prince of Raj. You've got uh, the prince of Persia. And they're aligned. So let me just, I just got some notes I want to give you so you get an actual picture of this. This 50th anniversary. And you could say, oh, it's a prophetic kind of timing. All right, you can call it that. But while it's happening, let's get, let's get the full gist of it. I'm going to play some of the... Uh, the scenes, you can't even show what they're doing. They're taking civilians out of their houses. They're uh, killing them. They're parading the women around on Jeeps. They're beating up on people. They're, they're, um, they're beating up on Israeli soldiers that they've caught, completely caught by surprise. There's been, there's no explanation for this. Now listen to me. Israel's attack is, isn't, this is not a terrorist operation. This is a military mobilization. And I believe you're going to hear Hamas and Hezbollah, both the same demons working together against Israel. As you see the images of them beating on, look, they're beating with sticks right now on, on, on an Israeli man. As you see them taking hostages and, uh, and doing this, 
What's really weird is the cheering and celebration. This is the most demonic part of this. The absolute celebration that goes on under the spirit of mind control in these countries, the people actually think this is a victory. This is, this is where the world is heading, into a place where the brainwashing is such that people will do violence to other people thinking they're doing God a service. Remember what Jesus warned? So you're going to hear about more attacks in the north. The images of civilians being killed are, are designed to provoke a reaction. This is where it becomes dangerous. Because what they really want is an overreaction. They want Israel to overreact. They really are counting on an Israeli uh, response that is going to be um, that is going to be dis disproportionate. And the reason why is because as we're speaking now, countries that we protect, countries that we fund, countries that we provide military assistance to, uh, that we thought were like friends of ours, the the Arab communities, the uh, UAE, the uh, Saudis, the um, let me see if I got my notes here. We have, we have, we have R uh, and Qatar. They're all actually coming out in kind of a support for the uprising. Now they don't trust me. They don't sympathize with the Palestinian situation, or they wouldn't have signed the Abraham Accords. They don't believe the Pal Palestinians really want peace. But it's a geopolitical realignment. They see America as weak. They see Israel. Uh, is, is this is the propitious time. They see a realignment of Turkey and Syria with Russia. They see Iran now in that deal. They have peace. China brokered a deal between the Saudi Arabians and Iranians so that whatever Ira Iranian, the Iranian mullah, who we just gave $6 billion to, came out and said that this is, uh, this is the beginning of progress. So the UAE, the Saudis, Qatar are all supporting it. And this, this is the treachery of the, of the condition that is in the world right now. Now, where did these weapons come from? Where do these missiles come from? Where did this full-throated assault come from? Nobody's asking the question. Why did Zelensky fire his top six defense contracting, uh, defense department, and, and, and appropriations leaders in Ukraine? I told you, Ukraine is so corrupt. The oligarchs were skimming money off the top, taking money, American taxpayer money, and it was redirecting it into the, into the deployment and the selling of weapons and such to bidders in the black market. So they're making a fortune off of American stupidity. The Biden administration, the stupid State Department, they want to give $200 billion more. Why did Zelensky just fire six people for corruption? Because he caught them distributing weapons and money to our enemies. It's, it's enough to make you crazy if you don't have, if you don't have faith. So the uh, Zelensky had to fire them for stealing. So where do you think those weapons went? Where do you think a, a portion of that money went? Is it possible that, a, that you're watching weapons being deployed right now in the Middle East that actually were taxpayer funded by the United States? Donald Trump, the, he's more accurate than 80% of the Pentecostal prophets that, that, that are against him anyway. The, uh, here, here's what he said. He said the moment the $6 billion deal happened, he said, this is going to result in U.S. taxpayer-funded hostage-taking, uh, which they're doing today, and uh, military, uh, and military uh, terrorism, which is happening today. Trump was absolutely right on in saying that. So Trump predicted it would fund the attacks, it would le result in hostages, and I wonder how many of these weapons were on the black market because of America funding a corrupt nation in a war they cannot win Ukraine cannot win this war. The Lindsey Grahams of this world that say it's a small portion of our defense budget in order to grind down Russia, we're not grinding down Russia. Russia has taken more land than Ukraine in Ukraine's counterattack this year. So Russia, Russia is actually being fortified. We drove Russia and China into each other's arms, and then the 30 BRICS nations all came together and attempted to to destabilize the dollar. They just couldn't do it by the grace of God, but the whole world is willing to take America down because America, when the favor of God lifts off you, the scary thing is favor gives you a supernatural advantage. It gives you a position of opportunity, gives you a position of, of, uh, of, of respectability, and it gives you a position of prosperity. When you turn on the God, that favored you and the favor lifts, the opposite happens. 
You're now supernaturally empowered to become vulnerable. That's why you must stand strong. You are the force of stability in the United States. Hillary Clinton just made the most astounding comment, and you need to hear her. She speaks for the Lindsey Grahams and the McConnells and the elite class. Trust me, 80% of the Washington people that aren't pro-Trump, pro-MAGA, consistent patriot people that are accountable to their grassroots constituency, she spoke for them. She said the MAGA people are a threat to America. They should be put in camps and deprogrammed. Basically, that's what she said. They should be forcibly deprogrammed. In her mind, because she's got a demon sitting on her, and we never prayed it off of her. I don't know. We probably probably authorized these demons by the way we, we talk about these people. But they're so under a demonic influence. She thinks that you, as a flag-loving, patriotic, praying American, need to be sent to one of those FEMA camps, I guess, and get deprogrammed. She had her way. She'd be starting layer by layer, be taken away the, you know, the Steve Bannons and then the Pesobegs and the Mike Lindells and, and they, they take all, then a whole echelon of evangelical voices like mine. Get them over there to the deprogramming factory because they're all dangerous. They're whack. They're crazy. They're insane. They think, um, they think that, uh, that, that, that America's being taken over by, by globalist elites. Well, the globalist elites are destroying America. Now, the big story that you ought to be thinking about is what do you think came through our southern border while we have these millions teeming across? And I'll give you just the number that they know. They know that they've got 100,000 military-age males. They didn't come with children. They weren't fle If they were fleeing persecution, they're a bunch of, of uh, reprobates because they left their sisters and their daughters behind. Now, these were military-age. Military, and we have over 100,000 that have come in so far, uh, that we have not accounted for. 100,000, I guess, within the last year. That's 100,000 military. You think you don't think that Iran, you don't think that China, you don't think that uh, Russia and some of the, and some of the like Chechnyan um, sympathizers that work under Putin's payroll, you don't think that they already got through the border? Just like Hamas surprised Israel and just showed up and took over territory that Israel should have been aware was in danger. We've got the equivalent of 10 military, div com 26 combat divisions. 100,000 men is 26 combat divisions. Put this in perspective. I think we only had 150,000 landed in Normandy on D-Day. This is the equivalent of 26 military divisions that are in the United States, probably just waiting for a signal. Remember Molly Ball boasting in Time Magazine how they had their Antifa and BLM and, and, and left-wing rioters? all ready to, to, to go incendiary in, in 200 cities if Trump was elected president uh, to create this violent illusion of a, of a spontaneous backlash against him as president. And she said they were on speed dial and her big giggling fit was, we had to call him off. Don't do anything, don't do anything. It succeeded, we won. Our, our conspiracy with big tech, with government, with uh, ballots won. We, we were able to keep Trump like they kept, like they kept um, a Hitler out of power. That's how they think. They don't realize that they're keeping, uh, they're keeping uh, Patton out of the military at a time of war. So, uh, and I think you guys understand what I'm saying, but when Hillary went, and went to the point where she irresponsibly, with one too many gin and tonics, spoke and said, the MAGA people, MAGA, the make America great people, are a threat. Well, what are we supposed to do? Celebrate the destruction of America with them? You understand how, how idiotic and how demonically transparent these, and she speaks for a whole company, the same group that locked up the January 6 people and threw away due process and have them, you know, locked away. How many years is it now without, without proper processing that goes after grandmas and, and, and breaks down their doors and puts them in handcuffs and hails them out in the neighborhood because they used geo-targeting to see who was actually there on the Capitol steps 
but but reject the geo targeting of Dinesh D'Souza that shows 2,000 mules that brought in 200,000 fake votes in an election just in Georgia where we lost by only 10,000 votes. How many hundred thousand fake votes were out there? And they're putting Trump in jail in Fulton County if they can get away with it because he dared to challenge the mule scenario. You see how sick this is? Well, here's the here's where the real danger is. You can't you can't you can't look at all this and and of course obviously I'm a little bit excited about this because I think that when you see divine discipline, you have to say, Father, what can we do to avert disaster? Well, it starts by recognizing you're the ones that thank God are are the target of the wrath of hell. You, you're, you're so many of you, 72 million of you voted in the last election. They can't stop you, but we are not well organized. So the best way to organize is you begin locally. You begin, you begin mobilizing locally. You start listening to the right sources. And, and you look at your legislator, which is up for election every two years. You look at your school board. You look at this next election happening in 13 months. And you begin to think very shrewdly. There's 30 counties out of 3,140 two or 43 counties in the United States, 30 that are consequential. I'll put them up again. I'll post them again. By the way, you need to share these, these, these broadcasts. If you don't mind, I've had one of the most tragic tech suppression experiences over the last years. I had 200,000 um, you know, subscribers wiped out in one day, um, 25,000 in another day. So it's very hard to even, even hear from me. It's unfortunate, but uh, if you don't mind sharing, while I have the freedom to be on this platform, we're doing the Lance Walnut podcast every day. You get these 25-minute analysis, and I try to keep them so that they're focused on the actual story. So, for instance, the actual story that you need to be looking at is uh, that Israel is being baited into a war. The, the, uh, the uh, Arab coalition that Trump was able to put together is being tested by a whole new paradigm that they perceive the United States as a, as a failing power and China is emerging in strength. Now, I love Netanyahu. I, 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 I call him a, a Cyrus type, a Churchill type, uh, of the order of magnitude of a Donald Trump. But I am also willing to call out when, when Netanyahu was the first person to make a phone call to Biden to congratulate him on the election when the election was being contested. I consider that to be a step of a political calculus that has no real moral loyalty in it whatsoever. Considering that Trump put Soleimani, took Soleimani out, the number one threat in Israel, an Iranian terrorist general, the fact that he moved the embassy to Jerusalem, the fact that he put the Abraham Accords together, it was shocking to me that Netanyahu was so fast to pivot for the political interest of Israel and how cozying up they are with China because I'm gonna tell you something. The guys in the know in Israel believe America's fiscal problems are so serious that we are going to self-destruct and that the dominant economic powerhouse is going to be a coalition of nations led by China. So they're already working towards China. Now, I believe, I believe, I'm going to come out and say it now, I believe God wants America to win. But for him to win, you're going to have to be the force to stand strong. I think the enemy, the devil, is always interested in springing the trap to be able to globally accomplish his end time agenda. But I believe that there's a, a, an intention of God that Trump would have four more years. They're gonna to try to lock him up. It's interesting to me that they can't kill him. I mean, don't you think if they could kill Kennedy, now that I'm convinced the CIA does this stuff, don't you think they would have killed him? I think it's almost like a Job scenario where God said, you could, you could go here, you could do this, you could do this, you can go that far, but you cannot touch his body. Uh, that's the only reason why the guys are <laughs> he's still out there. <laughs> They're not allowed. I just think that I think he's got like a, some kind of a halo device on him. So, so the uh, the situation with Trump is, you guys aren't following this at all. We had prophets who prophesied nothing will come out of New York. I'm not going to expose them because I, I'm tempted to, but I don't have the right motivation yet because I'm I'm so irritated. And how, and how prophecy becomes misused to create this kind of false sense of intrigue and inside insight and we're winning and Trump's in charge and you watch, stop it. We're in a life and death, death struggle right now, folks. And, and things are, are teetering like that. America hangs in the balance, but God wants to give Trump four more years. And I believe it's so that America can become a restraining force on exactly what you're watching right now. 
which is the global anarchy machine. China is salivating over Taiwan and the Silicon Valley, uh, the Silicon chip capacity that, that represents. Russia is, uh, is very much interested in, in now aligning itself as a global player to get the respect that it, it's always wanted to get. The nut jobs in Washington are mismanaging $200 billion more into Ukraine in a war we cannot win. And then they, and then their allies, I mean, Qatar, Saudi Arabia, I mean, we actually are protecting them with our own military and they're in alignment against Israel. I jerked the slack out of that call. I'd be calling them right now and saying, I guess you guys must think you're safe over there. You don't need us. And I'd start, to, I'd start, we've got financial clout. We still have 43% of the global trade is done in dollars. So the number one threat we've got is the open border. And what do you think Biden's doing right now? How do you know he didn't get some advanced intelligence saying you've got military operations coming through? Maybe the FBI shouldn't be looking at targeting MAGA conservatives as the number one domestic threat. Maybe that's stupid because you're about to find out that you've got 25 battalions of military grade operators in the United States through your porous border policy. And we don't even know where they are. They won't return the phone call. They came in and took off. It'd be funny if it wasn't so da so dangerous. All right, so I believe God wants to give us four years. I think we're going to we're gonna have to take the arrows like Elisha with that king and pound that ground five, six, seven. We're going to have to we're going to have to press in in a different way than we ever have before. We're going to have to mobilize smart. Like I said, thirty counties, seven swing states, and the corruption. We're going to have to have our anti-corruption attack, both with uh, got to use co computation and surveillance of what's going on with this next election. And wherever we can, we got to go to ballots that are counted versus, versus technology. Strange thing is, in the Philippines, they just came up with a case where, um, where uh, Smartmatic had to, uh, had to, had to, was held culpable because when they found out that, that you can actually manipulate the election machinery uh, with the Smartmatic technology from outside the, uh, the, uh, the polling station. And so the, keep an eye on that story because that's kind of interesting. Nobody's even reading it in the news, but there's something in there worth, worth watching. So we're going, we're going, I'm going to believe that God's going to give us, it'll be, boy, I'll tell you what, it'll be like hell in the United States. The left will be freaking out if Trump gets back in there. But you look at what we did with uh, McCarthy. Most of you guys, I hope you understand what happened with McCarthy because that $30 trillion, $31 trillion debt is the number one issue we got to deal with. Because if you don't have, if you're, if you're not financially solvent, if you have a Great Depression, if you collapse, but the world doesn't, but your currency does, then you can't project military strength. Uh, then, then you've got, then you do have a problem that is domestic uh, anarchy taking over. We have to deal with that debt. We have to deal with the border and with the 25 battalions worth of grade military operators that we may have crawling around looking for an opportunity for a signal to start to disrupt America in alliance with the, uh, with the assault on Israel to actually provoke what would become World War III once we get to that point, once we find out that we've got Iran and other nations in our soil that are doing terrorist activity in conjunction with an alliance that is against the U.S. and Israel, all to crash us economically and to pluck our wings militarily. And all that is possible, except for the grace of God. And the grace of God wants the United States to stay strong for the sake of, I believe, being the one linchpin with Trump that can hold back the anarchy so that we could have, I believe, 48 months of, of gospel freedom to be able to mobilize and to go into the nations and to be able to have a period at least where, where the enemy's in check and that final harvest can begin to come in. I believe the national debt, the invasion at our border, and the Ukraine, the, the, the ignorance of, of, of the Ukraine war, those three things have to be dealt with. Now, McCarthy, the reason why I was taken out was because of you. Folks like you, if you're in, if you're in tune with this, kind of like similar to uh, what we've got on, on the airwaves with, uh, with, with Bannon in the war room, we literally have only seven or eight patriot, courageous conservatives that are willing to challenge the speaker. Now, McCarthy got his office. He got his gavel after like 20 rounds of votes by making a deal with the MAGA patriots, a handful, a remnant that we've got, a margin, they said, you're going to have to deal with the debt. 
You're going to have to deal with the impeachment of Biden and the criminal activity. You can't waver and play inside politics on Biden or on the debt. What did, what did McCarthy do? He went over to the White House, negotiated a deal with Schumer and McConnell, the swamp team, in order to give, in order to take away from Trump the ability to talk about the debt in 2024. They literally approved not one year, but two years worth of debt. And then, and, and, and that's going to be a $2 trillion a year. Where in the world can you possibly, I mean, if you've got $100,000 as an income, and what bank is going to give you access to a million dollar house and five Porsches? And, and you're already maxed out in your credit card. The, the American economy, these guys don't think about that. So they've got $2 trillion worth of debt each year for the next two years. McCarthy gave them two years worth of debt that they could go. So this thing will go to 34, 35, 36 trillion dollars bankrupting us. Now, he said, but don't worry, because the way that this works is we're not going to approve any package budget items anymore. We're going to have an item by item by item challenge. Well, then McCarthy never came up with an item by item by item challenge. And when it came time to push through what they call an omnibus, or it's all rolled into one, all the pork and sausages in one big bill. He said, well, we got to kind of like have a continuing resolution, which means we're going to have to fund it for the next 45 days. Not only did he give them no challenge on the debt, on, on the whole budget, but he gave, he's going to continue to kick the can down the road with, with this um, with this resolution that we're going to temporarily just pass the budget to fund things. That's how they've done it since the 1970s or 80s. It's that, it's, that's how we got in the mess we're in. Well, the Patriots said, we told you the two issues were going to be deal with the criminal overreach of government. It's the, this, this warfare against Trump, this corruption of Biden, and this debt. We've got to take a position on well, McCarthy didn't do it. He kind of slugged along only as necessity dictated. The same period of time that Don Jr., Don Trump Jr., was on the Hill for three years trying to explain Russian collusion and his family didn't have any ties and they kept bringing him up looking for something. You got Hunter, who's like a pincushion of iniquities and they haven't brought him up once. So, so but that wasn't the issue. The issue was the debt and the, and the incompetence or the, or the uh, not incompetence, but the duplicity of, of, uh, of McCarthy, who felt he, he, he was invincible. He would stay in there, that the Democrats would never agree to voting him out anyway, and it would require them to pull him out. Well, shock of shocks, you pulled him out. You did it. The New York Times covers the fact this dangerous MAGA extremism group. That's why Hillary Clinton's freaking out. Their heads are exploding. How can this, this people actually reach all the way into Washington and interrupt our game? You interrupted it. Now the question is, is Jordan really capable, or Scalise, are they capable of understanding that our movement is, is dead serious about not empowering further fiscal stupidity? And we're not going to give $200 billion more to the Ukraine after they've fired six of their top uh, military people for, for black market you know, money making? No. If they're not, they can't win. Uh, Lindsey Graham thinks we're grinding down the Russian military with a small portion of our budget. You're not. You're inflaming a potential third world war conflict and you're already seeing the fruit of it with $6 billion that you gave to Iran now showing up in missiles and bombs. And that doesn't include what money you're giving to Ukraine that is leaking its way into these hands either. So you see where we're at, folks? That's, that's the picture of where we are. Now, what can we do about it? Well, uh, the first thing we could do is stay real clear about this. Israel has an absolute right to defend itself. They should punch hard, but they have to punch carefully because if they overreact, they will unite the entire Arab world against them. They've already got, weirdly enough, applause going on for the raping and the killing and the dismembering and the, and the abduction. Strange thing out there in the Middle East, but I think we're living in a different era. And the more that you have media showing and exposing the nature of what's happening, I think there's going to be a groundswell of populist backlash. I'm always waiting for that populist moment because it will come eventually. And it's when the people go, this isn't right, this isn't right. How can you applaud that? How can you? And there'll always be the political spin. Well, the Palestinians have been, you know, mistreated. What is happening now is a, is a organized military assault just like any other war to destroy a democracy from the outside in. And that's what's happening. And I believe that, uh, 
you're going to see this thing. In, in the Yom Kippur War lasted two weeks, and then they went to the negotiating table. Putin wants to be at that table to renegotiate the old borders around 1967, give, give uh, the Palestinians state what they want, give them, a, give them half of Jerusalem, put an embassy there. That's what he's planning for, just basically to annoy the United States. Some believe the Democrats, whatever Trump did, they do the opposite. Whatever American policy is, Russia's going to go against it, just because that's, that's the nature of demonic global geopolitics. What's the church got to do? We have to pray for wars to cease. We have to not allow the enemy and think, and don't think prayer doesn't matter. Daniel was in Babylon and he prayed in chapter 11, verse one, he pulled an archangel right down into the election process. Read it, at Daniel chapter 11, verse one. The angel came and said, I stood by Darius to confirm him and put him in office. Who was Darius? He was the one elected president or the one elected official who would favor the Jews in their church or house temple rebuilding project and the restoration of the borders so that they would be able to have their walls built and their temple restored. You could say that archangels get involved with electoral politics in spite of what a lot of Christian prophets want to say. Daniel chapter 11 verse 1 tells us that. You're under the new covenant with a better promise, better covenant. Trust me, you got angels that are getting involved with this stuff. We have to see the end of this regime and maybe the economic pain we're about to go through, the military uh, uh, fumbling that we've been doing. Maybe it will wake up the American people, like the Bill Mars, who suddenly had, oh, Bill Maher, he acts so, everybody credits him as being such a brilliant kind of commentator. It's tragic in a way. He just got an awakening. He said, what's going on with the border? Well, if you've been listening to us, you wouldn't know what's going on at the border. And when the terrorism activity starts, should terrorism start, you will watch the Democrats reeling over their policy on an open border. Now, this is going to be a year that we're going to have to keep ourselves free from the entanglement of distractions. There's going to be lots of conspiracy stories, lots of stories about this and that. Remember this, the debt. Got to focus on that fiscal thing because power and finance go together. We cannot allow our ship to be sunk right now because that's what sustains us for the four years of stability that the globe needs as the gospel's about to go forth. We're going to have to deal with this invasion on our southern border now. Seal that breach and begin to wake up as to what we brought into our country as prior as an absolute priority. And we're going to have to continue the drumbeat that we are not putting billions more into a failed effort in the Ukraine with uh, with Zelensky, who is hardly the choir boy of democracy. We the media's made him out to be. He suppressed journalism. He suppressed dissenting voices. He suppressed any 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 church activity that is not in compliance with what he wants. And uh, basically, he is uh, he. They're ready for peace. I believe Ukraine and Russia, if Trump was in office within a matter of a week, you'd see a cessation of hostilities, you'd see a negotiation and, an, and a resolution. These warmongers in the State Department that want us to get involved with Israel, want us to get involved with the Middle East, want us to get involved with these idiots with the authority to engage military action have to be bound. You have to pray that God thwarts the agendas of our own political elites in terms of war, that a divine veto comes down on military engagement, and that as, as Israel won within two weeks of their last Yom Kippur war, there will be within two weeks a resolution of this. And I pray that, uh, that Trump's prophecy, that he said that six billion will be used to make, take hostages and to incite warfare. I pray that there is a, there's even a limit on that. That, we're, that the world will have, that this will turn out rather to the furtherance of the gospel and that the world will look more sympathetically and realistically with revulsion upon the, uh, upon the cruelty and the, and, the, uh, and the destruction that is being released upon an innocent law-abiding people who do not, who pure young girls and, and families, you hear, them, you hear them crying out in terror from their windows, taking their video shots of what's going on coming down their streets as jeeps with a capricious military shooting of civilians is taking place on the streets of Gaza and that territory. And then I believe we're going to see all of this coming about for a shifting in the American psyche regarding what we want from government. And we're gonna to begin to see the exposure and, and the erosion of the narratives that we have been under for so long. 
All right, so now that, that's the report that I've got for you. And I, and I want you guys to stay, stay connected with the updates on this because we are going into this 13 months for this next election cycle. And, and while prayer is necessary, we had an awful lot of prayer. I don't want to have emergency prayer after another lost election where, we're, where half of it we're thinking was taken from us by theft. We don't want to have a close election this time. We're going to need to see a groundswell. And to do that, I believe we're going to have to see a certain amount of pain coming out of the exposure of what's been in government. I think the corruption has to be continued to be ma made manifest and, and, uh, and, and put on open display. And those people that did, they were prophesying about Trump's total victory in New York and how this is going to amount to nothing. They need to start being careful about what they're prophesying. The guy got hit with a, a baseline of $220 million in, in, uh, in fines for uh, the fictitious crime of an appraisal on property that a judge decided he doesn't agree with, when in fact, the appraisal on the properties that Trump was working on a decade ago or more were accepted by the banks. The banks said it's a deal we'll take. And then Trump paid them all back. This is pure warfare. They want to take his business license away. They want to take his son's ability to make a living away. This is the overreach of the kind of thing the government wants to do. It wants to bankrupt you. It wants to destroy you. It wants to smear you like Leviathan in the news process. It wants to tie you up in legalities and, and destroy your peace of mind and destroy your health and destroy your children's legacy. It is a cruel, destructive spirit. And I think Christians especially should understand it's coming for the church next. That you could hear Hillary Clinton. It's the deprogramming of the dangerous bank. Biden, the blithering imbecile, you know, that he is, gets up there and says that MAGA and white cr Christian nationalism is the greatest threat we've got. Well, he's about to find out. His dumb open border policy, his fiscal irresponsibility, his military adventurism is a far greater threat to our stability than the praying Catholics that are pro-life and the shofar blowing Pentecostals. Sounds sad to have to say it that, that clearly, but that's exactly where we are. Now, I believe God's going to give us victory, but he ain't going to give us a victory without a price. So there has to be a greater kind of a mobilization, a greater kind of a unification, and we're going to have to move in these, in these seven swing states. We're going to go do in these rallies. We're going to hit these rallies strong. We're mobilizing now in certain states. I don't know to announce what I'm doing because I got left wing watch and right wing, you know, left wing nuts actually is going to be monitoring pretty much everything I say during election season. But we're going to be announcing some mobilizing opportunities that are going to be singularly powerful and effective in these various states. Michigan is going to have a revival and a realignment. Nevada is going to have a revival and a realignment. Arizona is going to have a revival and a realignment. Pennsylvania is going to be strong. All right, I just got a call came in that's, uh, that knocked me off my uh, my uh, my internet. So I'm going to have to jump out of this. For those of you that are still looking at the economic scenario, remember this, LanceWallet.com forward slash Birch. Do what, uh, what Steve Bannon, what me and a bunch of other people are doing. We're looking at a 20-page report on the death of the dollar and on gold, silver, precious, precious minerals. Why? Because as the dollar becomes inflated and become, it becomes, it goes to the dumpster fire of mismanagement, you got to put your wealth into what the international banks are doing. For some reason, the American banks are not doing, they're looking at creating a digital currency, like they're going to be able to still control the world. Well, I don't know how long that dream is going to be lasting, but I'll tell you what, gold and silver is still going to be powerful. Go to lancewallet.com forward slash Birch, read the 20 page report about how you could, you could put a, a portion of whatever you have into something that is a boat that will float. I'm encouraging you to do that, and I'll be talking to you soon. God bless you.